Thank you, Maggie. Maggie Ellis gives us a super chat and says, hey, you two, I love your shows and appreciate the effort you put in to maintain your content's integrity. I'm married to a wonderful, smart, hilarious man who simply cannot see the truths you discuss that I've seen daily. It's not, this is the thing, Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. It's not an IQ thing. Thank you, Maggie. And I know, I know a lot of people are, can look at this and it's easy to just dismiss it as like, look at all the dumb people. It's not an IQ thing. Uh, it's a psychology problem. It's, it's psychology. Um, it's, it's the, it's, I think a lot of this stems from uh, internal psychological issues that aren't dealt with and in, mixed with a culture that tells you to celebrate them and not deal with them. Um, and, for, uh, and for a lot of people, it is hard to stand up psychologically, emotionally, it's hard to go against the grain. It's easier just to accept whatever you're being told is true and um, and put on your so sorry shirt and wear your chains um, and, and get adulation um, from your friends. Because by I, the way, the people in that picture, I, they've, they've got, I'm sure they got a lot of Facebook friends, like people like this. I'm sure you got lots of likes and their, their woke friends were all, right? Sorry, Carrie, go ahead. I wanna say something to, I mean, it just, I'm, I'm just feel for you, that's all. It's gotta suck yeah. being, uh, in that situation, because, um, you, you know, I, I've been getting lots of messages from strangers lately. I mean, I've been getting them for a couple of years, but the past month I've been getting a lot more. And now that this ideology has gone mainstream, so to speak, gone completely mainstream. And, um, you know, I was messaging with a woman last night who's got two daughters who have totally succumbed to this belief system. And she's like, what do I do? And, I don't have any quick answers. I will say what I've been trying to tell people is um, nobody changes their mind uh, because you assault them with a lot of facts. You know, you can give them facts, but but if you were doing it uh, with a if if you were doing it with like the intent to change them, I think you're going to make them more defensive and they're gonna they're gonna double down and hold on to what they already believe. And so we've been having this conversation in the Telegram chat, too, for Unsafe Space. If you guys don't know, we have a Telegram chat. Um, it's the same kind of thing about, like, people learning how to talk to the people in their lives who have some of these social, have accepted some of these social justice tenets. Just like, it, I don't know, it's hard to do this in practice, but I would say when you talk with them, just let them be who they are and come have your conversations from a place of love and caring and don't push too hard. If you push too hard, they're just going to double down. They're going to get really defensive. And lots of studies have shown this. It doesn't matter what the belief system is. If, if they feel attacked, they're going to cling to what they believe. Right. And so in, you can, in the like, face of ev ev like evidence, actual facts will have the opposite of the effect that you expect them to have. Right. Right. So and anybody who's in my life who's ever changed their opinion on something or anytime I've changed my opinion on something. It hasn't it hasn't been because that that person was trying to get me to change my opinion or because I was trying to get them to change theirs. It was it was never like so you can't go into it like uh like here's this video and here's this book and here's this and I need you to get on the same page with me. But maybe more of a, um, you know, maybe we could re read some books together. Why don't you pick one and I'll pick one kind of thing. I, or yeah, you just kind of ask them questions, ask them questions, from, but with a place that's open and accepting of whatever their answer is, just trying to get them to think more, you know? I, yeah, I'm not sure I would do a lot of like you read book and I'll read a book. I mean, I don't know that that would help because you'll just, you know, you'll end up reading White Fragility followed by... Uh, I don't know. I don't uh, think that's a bad thing. Coddling of the American mind. Um, I don't. I don't know that it will work because those books generally appeal to reason. Um, honestly, if you were married to someone like that, I, I, I think this is. It, it's a psychological issue that you need to deal with. So I would avoid having the political conversations, and I would really have a lot of empathy for whatever's going on with them psychologically, and just approach it like with kid gloves psychologically as like, okay, like, you know, um, why, why are they, why are they feel like I'm not, don't grill them. I'm not saying to be their therapist like that. They won't react well to that. Um, but this is a, it's a psychological issue, right? So I don't, you're not going to be able to appeal to argumentation to 
convince them. You're going to have to like, this is a psychological issue you've got to work, work through. Um, and I mean, it depends on why they're feeling that way. I don't completely disagree, Carter, but there, there's also, I just want to clarify, there's lots of different types of, I'm not talking about someone who's like a full blown SJW. I just mean somebody who's kind of maybe more of like what we call NPC, just kind of plugged into the mainstream narrative, but hasn't really ever investigated any of this stuff. And for that kind of person, it's not necessarily a psychological, I mean, it could be. I I think it's, no, it's still a psychological issue. It's fear of being, because what will happen, think about the consequences, them have some empathy. Think about how afraid you are to lose all of your friends and your job. Like, think about the consequences to them, the negative consequences to them for coming over to your side. That's what's preventing them from even looking at it objectively. And that's what needs to be dealt with. There's fear there. There's fear. They are afraid. And that fear is not unwarranted. It just- I, I, I agree, but that, and that's why treating them with love and acceptance and letting them express their opinions is the best way of dealing. I think of of not even like you're dealing with something, but the best way of interacting with someone you love, it's like, let them be themselves. Don't focus on trying to change them. Um, just love them and, and disagree firmly hold your position, you know, and try and explain yourself in a way they understand, but make sure they feel comfortable talking to you and not judged by you. Yeah, it, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not I'm yeah. not in disagreement with anything you just said about that. My only point is if uh, to try and give a little bit of direction to someone who's who's doing this, because that's kind of a like, OK, that could go right. on forever. Like that your goal in this in your relationship should be to help uncover what's going on, what their fears are there, by the way, which is true regardless of the opinions like that's a good, healthy, introspective like that, that helps someone through introspection and help them grow psychologically is good generally for a partner to do. So it's not, this isn't unique to this situation, but it is something that needs to be, you do need to have empathy for like, there's a reason why the pressure from a spouse is not sufficient for them to look at this. There's a reason for that. And it's, and it's, it's anxiety. There's like, there's some fear, there's some anxiety, there's something there. And your goal is to just keep your radar on let them be themselves, keep that radar on and start seeing if you can figure out what the underlying fears are fears. and what, what the issues are. Cause they'll, they'll, you'll figure it out eventually. Right. And there's probably not that hard to understand and everyone's so, got different, you know, different issues. 